if you want to be a normal person. <clears throat> but I guess they don't because they say no to normalcy. They're denying it. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I have a question too for you. What are the stages to introduce? Uh, homosexual lifestyle into society because when I was uh, a young man and I'm from Europe from Germany um, that was some sort of forbidden and I had not so much contact to this but when I was in my 30s uh, and I flew the first time to uh, New York I saw they had a parade there and I was quite appalled about this what is going on and the worst thing was that when I flew back they were with me in this aeroplane and they had all this, this nice caps on and this little paper trumpets there and they were <coughs> having a party in this airplane what are the stages to introduce homosexuality in, 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 in a society for example Russia is opposing it but not quite, because there's something going on that there is a stage of acceptance going on right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, um, and, and Susan can talk about this as well, but, um, well, uh, uh, let me just relay the progression that uh, the British historian Paul Johnson gives, and it's a wonderful quote. He talks about how in the UK, uh, the, the society wanted, uh, in the name of compassion, wanted to, to make it easier for homosexuals, so they abolished their buggery laws. They were called buggery laws in, in, in Britain. And that was, that was intended for compassion. Well, that led to, basically he goes how that led to more demands. Demands for, for, it went from demands for tolerance to demands for special treatment. And then more and more, and then demands for superior. And he ends up in the progression saying what we ended up with was a monster in our midst, loud and clamoring. And I would say that in Canada and certainly in the United States, we now have a monster in our midst and the problem is you can't put, it's very difficult to put it back right. It'll be a miracle if we can overturn even one state's so-called gay marriage law. But I think when you look at the United States, I've been reading gay history lately, and it's, it's very interesting to me that what we call homofascism was basically the modus operandi uh, after the so-called Stonewall Revolution. There was, there was uh, homosexual activism before Stonewall. But after Stonewall, they started doing what is basically, uh, they, they only do in a more sophisticated way now. They would get the, uh, say Bill's the mayor, he comes in, the mayor of New York, uh, Lindsay, I think his name was Mayor Lindsay, they basically ruined his career. Every time he'd be in a public venue, some homosexual activist would get in his face and say, what about the homosexuals? Start screaming at him. They would disrupt talk shows. They disrupted Dick Cavett's show, which was the biggest show at the time. And what did Dick Cavett do? Rather than somehow punish them for disrupting his show, he rewarded them and said, hey, why don't you come on my show and we'll talk about it. So every, just like spoiled children, I know homosexual activists get mad when I say that, but just like a spoiled children is rewarded for his misbehavior, and everybody's seen it. If you've been in a plane and you got some loud, obnoxious kid, usually you have a, 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 an air, a parent who's not doing his job, right? So the child is rewarded for his misbehavior. Every time the homosexual activists engage in this sort of homofascist, uh, uncivil behavior, shouting somebody down, disrupting somebody's show as if they're entitled to disruption and to incivil behavior, every time that happened, they were effectively rewarded by the establishment, it, it, whatever it was. And that's exactly how it is today. Uh, Dr. Laura's TV show, if you remember a long time ago, Dr. Laura called homosexuality a biological error. <coughs> um, what did she do? Well, her TV show uh, was taken off the air, so they got their objective. But then she took out two full-page ads in Variety magazine. Must have cost her hundred thousand uh, dollars, saying, "I apologize." You know. So, so it's, we we see this again and again and again. You see the the the, the uh, obnoxious homosexual behavior, aggressive homosexual behavior, rewarded by the establishment, wherever it is, and then we apologize uh, for for doing nothing wrong, and it, and it continues on the cycle. And so I understand why. You know, the reason I went to Jamaica and others are going abroad is because we're telling these societies don't follow in America's footsteps or in Canada's footsteps because this thing they call tolerance at the beginning grows into this monster in our midst which, which takes societies down. Yeah, I, I think uh, Susan has something uh, to say. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, and I just wanted to add to that that uh, we do have hope because um, 
some of us have uh, gone lobbying in Washington, D.C. With, uh, uh, with their organizations in the United States. Uh, we've actually been successful in helping to overturn some decisions. And so the best thing to do is to go see your, sen your senators and, and our Congress people. Um, but also, too, uh, can I just give a short start? Very, very okay, we've got five minutes left. Okay, very yeah. quick. Okay. Um, I went to Ottawa this week, uh, or the last, the last two weeks ago. I went to Ottawa and I didn't know why the Lord sent me there. I found out that um, Bill C-279 was being discussed after the second reading. Bill C-279 is talking about the transgender issue. And, uh, um, and um, I found out uh, through a, se uh, a senator that they're going to have a meeting the very next day after I got there. So, um, I, so him and I discussed about um, some, of the, some of the issues that, concerns that I had. Um, and what happened, I was in the meeting, the Senate meeting, uh, with 12, 12 senators. Um, there was seven, um, there was seven transgender, uh, seven transgender organizations represented, and there was the um, Amnesty International there and me. <laughs> and the Lord was, the Lord was good, um, and my points got across. So that's just me. So we really need to fight. Yeah. Thank you everyone for participating. Uh, please pray for Peter and I as we go on trial on Tuesday. And uh, we really do want to give uh, glory to God uh, for this opportunity to, to, to bring this uh, documentary to the culture. Uh, may, may the Lord use this to change hearts and minds and let there be some truth that's shining in the darkness. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.